Today, I'll be talking about the hero archetype. I want to be a writer because I like to write. I like to tell stories. Mm, very, very sophisticated hats. Not really. It's all about creative writing. This was more my cup of tea. A little bit of a tight one though. Still, when you get writing, you just gotta do what you can. Thank you for joining me on my creative writing journey. My name is James Sevier. I actually heard the concept of an archetype first in an art class I participated in in Chile. Now, archetypes are characteristics that appear in areas relating to behavior, psychological and literary analysis. An archetype might be a statement a pattern of behavior or prototype which other statements, patterns of behaviors and objects copy or emulate. In the book I finished recently, and will need to read again, called The Writer's Journey, it's a very typical example of a certain personal thing that is expected in a story. Carl Jung is a psychologist studying these states in the primitive mental image inherited from the earliest human ancestors and supposed to be present in the collective unconsciousness. You find this archetype in all modern storytelling, especially Star Wars, believe it or not, the original Star Wars. It was pretty much Joseph Campbell's The Hero of a Thousand Faces. It was just brought up to date, and that's why it struck so many chords. Why I think the new Star Wars film, The Last Jedi, was seen as a letdown to so many fans was surely because the director, Ryan Johnson, went against this concept of archetypes. I thought that was clever, as The Force Awakens was criticised for being too much like Star Wars by meeting Joseph Campbell's expectations in his original hero's journey. Uh, but for The Last Jedi to be the opposite and get criticised anyway, I'm a major Star Wars fan, by the way. I love the originals, I read all the books on what's called the Legends now. It was actually Timothy Zane who got me into wanting to be a writer and how books changed Star Wars in a way that ruined it because it made the stories so damn good. I don't care what people say. Episode one is the best of the prequels. I mean, got Liam Neeson's Qui-Gon, Natalie Portman's Queen Abadala, Darth Maul with dual lightsabers, a young Obi-Wan, pod race, epic music, just brilliant move. I mean, yeah, you could slate it for Jar Jar Binks, but nothing's perfect. Still, it followed a very similar structure to the original Star Wars. I think I'll need to make a video about Star Wars. Well, as I was saying, when a story meets the subliminal fulfillment to expectations of a story, it's great. Hit with a quantum peak in a medium, and you have these stories like Titanic, Wizard of Oz, Avatar, Lord of the Rings, or Gone with the Wind which are quite simply classic. Each of these stories has a similar archetype. Luke in Star Wars, Frodo in Lord of the Rings, Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, and of course Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Now, these are hero archetypes. What is a hero? A hero is the major character of a narrative. In the classical sense, the hero is not only involved in dangerous adventures or wars, but also in feats and exploits of unparalleled courage and bravery. He or she takes the narrative along with them to the end that is usually their victory, or in some cases, their death. However, a modern hero plays a complex role in facing mental dilemmas. As he or she is an ordinary person intended to bring out complex modern psychological issues based by modern man, this long journey of a hero from prince to a common man or a common man to become a king or a common woman to be a princess or a queen has brought us several changes in narrative, turning tragedy into a tragic comedy, a complex modern tragedy, absurd writings and then modern pieces. Therefore, the character of a hero or heroine in a literary piece not only brings unity in action, but also makes other characters prominent when they are compared and contrasted with them. That is why a hero is considered the central figure of a narrative or a play. Odysseus is the principal character of Homer's epic Odyssey. Odysseus has been presented as the dominant character of the 10-year-long Trojan War. Now, 
Theseus is well known for his brilliance, versatility, wit, and ingenuity. He is the best example of a larger than life figure of a classical hero, along with people like Hercules or Achilles. The hero is the audience's personal tour guide on the adventure, that is, the story. It's critical that the audience can relate to them because they experience the story through their eyes. That whatever skills the hero used previously would no longer be sufficient. Together, the hero and the audience will master the rules of the special world and save the day. The hero usually is the protagonist to the story. The hero always has one unusual circumstances of birth. Think King Arthur, the fruit of Lorraine's loins promised by Uther to Merlin to satisfy his lust for her. Harry Potter and the death of his parents. Luke Skywalker and his unknown heritage of being the son of the most evil man in the universe. Even characters like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz has unknown heritage. We don't know her parents as she's bound to Auntie M. The focus on making their births ambiguous reduces the expectation and also can make their journey involve mystery in the past that they can face in trials ahead. Number two, they meet a mentor. Luke meets Obi-Wan. Dorothy meets Professor Marvel. Arthur Merlin, Frodo Gandalf. Three, for some reason they are uprooted by tragedy from not abiding to the call of the adventure and forced to leave. A tornado takes them away, the sword is taken from the stone, war takes place or a letter comes flying in the chimney, something breaks the normal common person out into the special world. The reader is henceforth the hero of the story. Every step they take into the special world is every step we take as readers. Number four, the hero has got to have a special weapon. He's got to have like a badass sword, a pegasus, a wand, red slippers. It's kind of a given. The hero needs something awesome that we could all have wish to have. Who wouldn't like to have a lightsaber? Come on. Be good storytelling, it's all about expectations. And when you defy convention, however, like The Last Jedi, back to The Last Jedi again, Luke not getting involved and throwing the lightsaber over his shoulder, Ray's parents being unveiled to be not important, Poe not taking over as commander to go kick ass, or the villain not just not catching up with the rebels to blow them up, kind of ruins people's expectations and gives them a bad experience. I mean, I remember everyone used to say like how when Leia got blown up after that moment and Kylo Ren just came in back to life. I mean, everyone was like, oh no, how could she just do that? I mean, it was obvious, she's Vader's daughter and has the force. Even Finn's sacrifice of the battering ram was denied to the audience. I mean, finally the man's got something worth fighting for. He was robbed of his moment at the end by Rose. I think that's why many people didn't like Rose, to be honest. The Last Day is an example when you go against collective unconsciousness of what is to be expected in the hero's journey. Uh, so much more to talk about and I'll get there, but for today, you know the archetypes exist and the hero can be anyone, but most important, it's the reader. And it's their subliminal psychological connection to an ancient form of storytelling that has moved us since the dawn of time. The earliest story recorded in history is the story of Gilgamesh, the king of Ur, which is retold in many different ways. But one quote which I read once from Gilgamesh, a verse narrative by Herbert Mason, summed it up pretty well. What we finally do, out of desperation, is go on an impossible or even forbidden journey or pilgrimage, which from a rational point of view is futile. Find from them the secret of eternal life or the secret of adjusting to this life best we can. In the end, we are all heroes or heroines of our own story. And that's why we like to hear about the hero's journey, because we become that person. Learning the secret of immortality is life in words. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe if you have any questions or like me to look at anything in particular about creative writing or the writer's journey in my next video, then write it in the notes below. Now the rhyme note. I just hit 10,000 words on my NaNoWriMo quest. Arrgh. And I've been writing like 800 words on the bus in the morning on my way to work and 800 words on the way back from work. It's not well written, but it's nothing a little or a lot of editing can help. Good luck to all those taking part and stay in there. Get writing, ladies and gents. Thank you very much. Goodbye.